Women Transforming Themselves and the World, Promethus Books, April 2010, Beirut puts femininity and masculinity in context and explores what it truly means to be a successful woman today and how women together can help each other become iron butterflies and bring greater balance and well-being to a world out of balance. I think we're at a, a very important time in history where we as a, a species have an opportunity to evolve. And, but, uh, but if we stay unconscious, we also can devolve. And, it is a, and that also is spurring me to speak to, uh, speak to people because it, it, this is a really important time and I think of a potential tipping point. When I was doing this book, I ran into a revolution hidden <coughs> in plain sight. Women are transforming our society. And it's not on the radar screen. <coughs> you're not going to hear about it in the news. And you may not even know that you're part of this movement. But maybe by the end of my talk, you'll realize you are. Part of my message is uh, validating those feminine skills that haven't been um, that have been largely marginalized, and realize that they are very powerful right now uh, in a, a global interconnected world. The late uh, New York Congresswoman Bella Abzug said, uh, "In the 21st century, power was not going to change women. Women were going to change the meaning of power." And that's exactly what I saw happening in writing this book. I saw women transforming the meaning of power from power over to power with and for others. And in this way, they are midwifing a new era, a new era of cooperation and collaboration, and with the possibility of really changing and transforming our society from one based on domination, power over, to one based on cooperation, power with and for others. Awakening the Iron Butterfly in you is a way to empower your feminine skills and be a more effective leader in whatever realm you're in. We often hear about successful women. Once they're successful, well, here we hear the struggles that they went through in order to be successful. And that really, I think it really helps all of us to identify and resonate and learn from each other in a different way. So I interviewed 60 women uh, from eight countries, former uh, Prime Minister of Canada, Kim, Kim Campbell, uh, Barbara Kingsolver, the novelist and environmentalist, uh, Jody Williams, the uh, uh, Nobel Peace Laureate for Landmines, uh, Pat Mitchell, former CEO of PBS, um, lawyers, judges, doctors, nurses, teachers, educators, CEOs, entrepreneurs, artists, dancers. So. Here I have all these interviews with these, uh, with these women, and I ask myself the question, well, what do they share in common? And the answer that I got really surprised me. Um, and so I knew that I could really trust this finding, because I didn't go in there with the hypothesis. It was sort of, what, are the, what do I see here that's common? And it was how they dealt with vulnerability in themselves and in others. People who are connected to their vulnerability are more willing to collaborate because you see your interconnection and interdependence to other people. You know you don't stand alone or fall alone. If, you don't, if you're not connected to your vulnerability, then you don't need anybody. You just bark out orders. You don't need to work with anybody. This was really surprising to me. So vulnerability creates conditions for a more collaborative work environment. And when you're collaborating, you're transforming the meaning of power, from power over to power with. I've, I struggle with using the word vulnerability because it really rocks people. Uh, because it's actually a taboo word in our culture. You don't use that vulnerability, that word with any uh, positive casting on it. Um, and, and people are threatened by that word, but I'm not backing off. I think that the word is important to reclaim it and to rethink it because I think it addresses our humanity. When I speak to women in business arena, I'm very conscious of how can they... I say that vulnerability is a learning edge for organizations. If you address vulnerabilities and learn from them, you become a learning organization, which is an adaptable organization, which is very powerful in this fast-changing environment. So when I speak, I get very practical about different ways that they can transform vulnerabilities into strengths. She validated a lot of what I feel anyway, or how I sort of been trying to live my life. 
Um, so it was just nice to have that message said again. Different people in different situations have told me, you have said what is in my heart. And so I feel very um, privileged to be in the position to be a kind of a collective voice. Uh, and that's what's really satisfying for me. Uh, because it is validating something very deep in people, uh, a goodness in people, I think, uh, a hope in people to be the best they can be, uh, and to be fully engaged in their lives in the world.